Today we're gonna make the rocker bar for Madison and it Daniel Jones did us a huge favor because he uh, he made it out of half by three quarter which is takes all the bumping out of it. Now to make it exactly like Daniel's shoe you would have to put a very small bump in this branch and this branch. But these videos are obviously for people who are figuring out how to make these shoes. So if I was in the lower categories, I would make this shoe without bumping either side. I would bend the toe and I would move along with this shoe rather quickly because putting those bumps in there, that's probably going to be a good thing if you're just trying to perfect the shoe and you know exactly how much time and you've made umpteen hundred of them. So with that in mind, if you've made umpteen hundred of them, then I would put a light bump, choke it down and put a light bump in each side. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do an uncontrolled heat and I'm just going to go across the center of it and I'm just going to turn it. That's how I'm going to start the shoe. I have, I have quite a few marks on this shoe. I have on the outside edge of this shoe, I have, it's a 12 inch piece of 3 eighths by 3 quarters. So on the outside edge, I have 3, 6, and 9. That's got it divided up to the toe and the quarters. And then on the back side, I just have a, a mark at, at three and nine. And the reason that is, is so that I, when I, the whole time I'm making this shoe, I never ever want to hit the back side with my hammer on those two, three and six dots. I'm trying to make the shoe grow in the toe and grow in the heels by flattening and cleaning up my section, but I never want to touch this. And we'll use the flatter I'm not the flatter, excuse me. We'll use the fuller to flatten the other side and make the ground surface. But we're basically gonna make a banana shoe while we're making it and then let the fuller flatten it from the other side and that'll give us our rocker. All right, we're just gonna make a toe bend. Now I got the dots here and there. I'm just gonna come through the toe and flatten up. Like I say, don't ever go to the dots. Flipping it over so I get the same process on both sides. That really makes my toe bend into a hot air balloon, so I'm just gonna tighten everything up. And then repeat the whole process again. Now I'll just come up here and bring it, my stock section size back to normal instead of letting it get blown out. What I did there is just trying to that when you when you flatten it out this makes the outside edge really grow so it makes the outside the, the shape of the toe become really 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 exaggerated so when I come back in here just kind of gathering everything back up from both sides all right what I'll do is I got my toe bend I got my marks on both sides now I'm gonna make one side and then make the other side I got my center punch mark there I'm just gonna come in and flatten everything real quick Get my section back and then hockey stick it. Kind of hard to hold on to because it's already been narrowed up in the toe. up I don't want my center punch dot to hit the anvil so pick it up and then I'll scarf it I'm gonna just kind of neck it up a little bit because I got it let it get wide leads up to the corner and then
square it up. I got half a shoe made, and I'll do the other side. I got the dot right here. Pick up and narrow up, and then I'll hockey stick. The dot is right here. I'm picking up, and now. I'm narrowing all that up, and then I'll scarf it right on the edge. Clean up to the corner. I'll prepare to scarf it and we'll weld it on the next heat. All right. Put my scarfs together. I'm just getting that, hitting the back edge and getting that little bit of a frog plate. Just making sure I got everything sealed up nice. All right, so I got some heat. This class happens to be sponsored by Iron Mountain. Put some Iron Mountain, keep it shook up really good. And remember, if you're not using Iron Mountain welding flux, you're not welding, you're just worrying. I don't want to splatter or make a mess or nothing. I just want to get everything put together so I got no seam and then I come back here and kind of clean up the inside of my frog plate. Everything is the same color, so I've got it welded good. So this is the back side. So what I'm going to do is I'm really picking up so I'm not against I got a gap here, so I'm really lifting up when I'm hitting the bar and the back of it. I always like to weld three times because it just seems like that works the best for me. It's a good system. When I'm up, I'm way high. And that's how I'm just getting this end of these bars cleaned up because the end of this bar, I'm getting narrowed out. And then I'll come back here on the horn and I'll tighten everything up. Then I'll come here and just that's pushing that frog plate and really making that frog plate nice and tight and tidy. See, you can see I'm really pulling on my tongs, get that frog plate in the center, and now I'm really lifting up and going down to the corner. You can see I'm going to start here and go on down to the corner. Got the back half, just trying to get as flat as I can, lifting up on it. Now I'll do the front half. You can see that I've already starting to rock. As long as I as long as I stay true to the two points, it'll come out normal. All right, we're gonna T-square the toe. And so now you can see we got everything squared up and we're ready to fuller. All right, we're gonna hem since we have a wedge on the shoe. You always want to have the wedge pointing towards the big part of the bick, otherwise it'll tilt your shoe and it'll make one side fine and one side coarse. So I'm holding it in the heel, I go to the widest part of the shoe, go over the top, and come on down. And that way, like I say, if I'm hitting and the big part of the bick is on the inside, on my wedge, then if I do that the same on both, then my ramp is coming up. If I do it on one side and not the other, it'll be inconsistent because it's a wedge-shaped branch. And it's a hard stop on both sides. And remember, my fuller now is working as a flatter because it's flattening the back side. Now I take my stamp. You can see the center punch mark there on the side. And I come up here, lift up on my center punch dot that's right there, and do the same here. I'm not going to punch them nail holes out. I'm going to go to the other side first. So I'm going to ham. Go to the widest part, go over the top. Just 
kind of making a nice clean transition. I'm just going to keep on working my way through it. And this is, like I say, this creaser is working as a flatter and making that backside flat without taking any height off the top of that crown of that rocker. Find the widest part. And then you can see I got my center punch mark right there. I'm just picking up on it. Center punch mark there, picking up on it. Now I'll just clean up each side, sweeten it up just a little bit, kind of tighten up my section, and then we'll rasp on All right, just kind of tightening up my heel. Again. Just kind of cleaning everything up. Tightening up my section, going right up through the toe. I'm doing it on this side. I'm getting that back edge. Picking up, flattening it. Picking up, going right through the toe. I can't say it enough to over exaggerate picking up on this so you're not beating that down. I'll go to the other side now. We'll finish it off and be done. Crisping up that corner. Just kind of blending everything together so I got no bumps. A nice clean section. Pick up, go all the way to the toe, pick up, go all the way through the heel. You can see the backside, so I'm picking up higher than the nail, heel nail touching and going right through the toe. Holding up a little bit higher than the heel nail and going on, and that'll, that'll give you the rocker. If it doesn't rocker, just kind of adjust it a little bit. Go. I'm just going to do a little file work on it, get the lines, clean it up real nice. Just put some edges on it and start to top file it and get it all beautiful. We're pretty much done with it. Some of the pitfalls in this shoe would be getting it flat from the backside. You really got to be meticulous with your puller and making sure it's flat. Getting it to rocker, you've got to go just be able to rocker. That's the whole idea of it. And uh, getting it to size, I think we came out pretty good. It, it's a fun shoe to make, and you put enough marks on it, and it gives you lots of uh, training wheels to to make it be a symmetrical shoe when you get done. Don't forget to visit our YouTube channel and our website, www.worldchampionshipblacksmiths.com and you can get one of these badass hats that say, Make Forging Great Again. And uh, all the proceeds go to like live, us living indoors and eating food and stuff. So it's a good process and probably making these videos too. So have a cool day and stay safe.